Hi everyone, my name is Philip and welcome to my channel. I recently bought an ASUS water-cooled RTX 3090 that I'm using for crypto mining and in this video I'm going to tell you what's wrong with it and how I've fixed the issue. In NiceHash, the ASUS card is the top one and you can see the VRAM is running very hot at 94 degrees Celsius. While the front of the ASUS card is water-cooled, the back plate is not and that's where the problem is. If we uh, take a look at it, we can see the back plate runs up around 70 degrees Celsius. I've fixed this problem in the past by buying uh, cheap CPU coolers for end of life CPUs. So I've just bought one for 80 New Zealand dollars, which is about 55 US dollars. So I'm going to modify the CPU, attach it to the back plate, and then we'll see how much the results are improved. This is the uh, low cost CPU cooler I got that was uh, on special and uh, been got rid of by a local retailer. So let's rip it out of its box. Even an RGB model, won't be using that. Don't need any of the brackets, screws, any of these pieces. This is the only bit we really care about, the uh, cooler itself. Don't need this bracket, so let's see if we can get rid of... Yep, so we'll get rid of the bracket. I'll just leave this little plastic cover on since it... I'll probably put some more thermal compound on because uh, this is used to having it screwed together and squeezed quite tight, so I'll put a little dab on. So. Out of that box, that's the uh, only piece we're going to keep and use. Now last time I changed the water cooling on this rig, I made a critical uh, design error. I put the radiator and fans down, um, down here, and that part's all good. But what I did was, I left the uh, drain valve connected to the reservoir, which used to be the lowest part of the system. And so the problem I've got now is, I can still use this to drain all the water out of here, but now the lowest point in the system is actually this radiator valve. So I'm going to have a very messy job where I need to remove that and try and capture all the uh, cooling fluid that comes out. Um, I'm going to fix this by putting in a T-valve here and a new drain plug here, which will be the new lowest point. But unfortunately, um, I'm just going to have to go through this horrible process of draining it so I can fix it properly. Let's get the easy part done. I need to crack a valve on the top of the reservoir to let uh, air in and then um, Another reason for doing this is my ball valve is broken, so after that I'll take the ball valve off and that'll drain all the fluid out. So we'll get him off. Alright, now we'll take him off carefully. So that drains out the first easy part of it. All right, now we're on to the uh, hard, difficult bit, draining it out from the radiator. All right, I've been flipping the um, crypto miner around and I've actually managed to get the uh, reservoir as a much lower point. I've managed to get out uh, 450 mils of the coolant fluid now. So, so that actually is quite, um, by far, the majority of it. So that's gonna make the uh, mess when I disconnect this next pipe a lot less. Um, so uh, yeah, let's try and disconnect this pipe and collect the rest of it. Okay, let's start this, uh, the difficult part of this. At least this way the uh, fluid should all, uh, won't run over the motherboard or anything else. So already I've got a problem, that, that adapter is very tight. Alright, now he's starting to slip. Let me get the jug ready underneath. Oh, all right, now I've got to try and pull that pipe off. Oh, this is just going to end up in a little bit of a mess, I think. All right, let's get ready again. Oh, it's gone much better than I was hoping. I thought that was just going to go everywhere. I must have drained quite a bit of the fluid out of the system beforehand. Oh, I've got to say, I'm quite pleasantly surprised. I really did think that was going to be a bit of a nightmare getting that fluid out. And I've, I've just put a paper towel down here just to try and catch any drips because I really don't want it going back towards the motherboard. But um, so far, it's staying nice and dry. So I think it's time to get that a Zeus card out of there so I can start modifying it. In this system, the water first will goes into an EVGA RTX 3090. And this is an existing card I've already modified with another water cooler. Then it comes out and goes into the um, Zeus water cooler. So now we've just got to de-plumb these two fittings and uh, remove it. So let's start with that process. So this pipe here is the water outlet from the card and it usually goes back to the radiator. 
I've put down an extra sheet of um, white um, paper to uh, try and catch any other unexpected um, water leaks. In fact, that one will come out. And then this is the water inlet to the card. All right, he's coming off nicely. Good, no water leaking everywhere. All right, disconnect the PCIe power cables. And he's got a PCI riser. Uh, let's just try and get this pipe off here. All right, so he's detached. So he will start to, should be able to start to lift off now. Oh, he's just got his PCI riser at the bottom. What's holding, on? oh, all right, he's also cable tied in. Let me just go get some uh, snips and I'll just cut the table tie. All right, I can remove the cable tie from the back, which you won't be able to see from there. All right, now we can finally lift the card out. And we just got the PCI riser to detach on the bottom here. Uh, let's see, oh, he's got a little RGB cable. Oh, one more power cable here to go. All right, he's, yeah, finally out and we can start working on him. Let's take a look at uh, how we might attach the CPU cooler. So around these bits here is where the hottest parts are, the VRAMs under here. So we wanna try and cool that as much as we can. Um, so obviously we can't place it right here because we've got screw holes. So we can probably, yep, I think that'll fit in uh, quite, we can fit it in so it's between all the screw holes so they're still all accessible and um yeah that should work good now something i just noticed is there's a screw there and a screw there but uh, these two holes are both missing screws i wonder if that's meant to be missing screws or that's just a uh, accident never mind all right so now i know i'm going to put it about there the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to um, sand off uh, a lot of the material around this region i'll do that outside and that's because I want to try and get back to as much as possible metal on metal for the heat transfer. Um, and the other thing is it'll make uh, a high temperature epoxy resin bond better if it's going metal to metal. I've removed one of these screws to see how, what size it is in length and I've replaced the two screws that were missing in the uh, back here. I presume they should be there so uh, it's not so good on the um, Zeus build quality side. I've now sanded back the sort of middle where the um, CPU um, where the rear of the CPU cooler is going to be touching to uh, aluminium and I'm just going to clean that off with some uh, isopropyl alcohol so it's all nice and clean. I've given the whole thing a really good blowout to make sure there's no little aluminium particles anywhere in the card or in the crevices. Uh, all right, we'll get some, let that just dry for a sec, get some more heat seek compound and some uh, resin and we'll be away. Okay, I have this uh, high temperature rated uh, five minute epoxy resin. So I'm just gonna put maybe two blobs, one on the top, one on the bottom. I was gonna put some more heatsink compound on, but I, I think, you know, the manufacturers put um, quite a bit there already. So hopefully uh, what they've done is appropriate. All right, now this one's quite hard to squeeze out, but we'll get them going. Put a little blob there little blob there. That should be enough to hold it on. It's um, rated to 140 kilograms, but we really don't need uh, hardly any strength at all. We just need it not to um, weaken when it gets hot. So we'll put it on diagonally, we suggested before. All right, checking all the screw holes. Now I'm a block. I'll give it a little push to make everything spread, the heat sink compound and everything. Uh, in fact, I'll slide that up a little bit. Yeah, I think I'm pretty, pretty happy with the positioning. All right, I'll leave a little weight on that. And although it says epoxy, uh, five minute epoxy resin, I think we'll maybe just leave that sitting for an hour to uh, give it plenty of curing time. Okay, it's been an hour and a half now and that looks like that's bonded uh, really well. It's really flush against the surface and it's on nice and tight. And uh, now we need to start prepping it for water cooling. Now the water's gonna come in on the other side of the card, uh, go through that surface, and then come uh, out when it come out this port and into uh, this one. So we need to take this port off.
and then uh, this port here is now not going to be used so we want to take this one this one off oh it's tight there we go and now we need to block this port so it'll come in here or through this and then back out through here and then we'll just plumb it uh, back out through here and then we'll plumb it back into here. I've just been playing with some combinations and what seems to work quite well is if I use an extension piece and this uh, flexible 90 and uh, screw those two in and sit that one there and then uh, put another 90 there and then I think I'll just make a short piece of hose to go between those two and that will sort that one out nicely. So I'll just do that and then I'll come back. A tip I'll give you for cutting up hose, especially for short lengths that I've found that's good. So usually this is the fitting that goes um, on the pipe and you'd normally put it this way around and then it screws up and tightens. If you just turn this around the other way, so that's got a rel relatively tight, tight lip around the pipe, um, it's very easy to do fine adjustments. So you just grab yourself a sharp knife and just cut along the edge of it and then you can do uh, very minute and very nice square cuts. All right, after a lot more messing around and more adjustments, I've got it all plumbed in the end. I ended up changing uh, this piece just to a simple 90 and just using a slightly bigger piece of pipe here with a little bend in, but it's uh, all looking good, so time to fit that back into the crypto rig now. Okay, I've got the uh, MSI card screwed back in again, so the reservoir comes to the first RTX 3090 through its front plate out, through its back plate out into this card, out into the CPU cooler. Now I need to fit a 90 degree return. So this water will go back to the radiator for cooling now. All right, and uh, let's get the other side plumbed in. Let's get rid of this old uh, drain plug. since he's no longer the lowest point in the system. Let me just use these to loosen them up. All right, we'll put a plug in to fill that hole up. All right, now we just got to plumb in our new T-valve between the radiator and the return from our CPU cooler. Okay, so I'm gonna use this uh, T joint. So it goes straight through and has a piece out the front. We're gonna put a drain plug on here and uh, return from the CPU cooler will fit in. And then we've got a little male male piece, make it interface with the radiator. So we'll start putting those bits in. Right, that's nice and tight. That's for our return pipe. He can be plugged in now. All right, and finally I'll drain drain valve. So this will be much easier next time. I'll just better sit this on the edge of the table and um, I'll just better pull the, uh, undo the cap, pull this forward and then uh, drain the water out. It also is threaded um, so I can um, attach a hose if I want. All right, I'm going to fill the loop now. Uh, I've shown how to do this on several other videos and it takes a while so I'll do this uh, and then uh, come back when we're ready for testing. Changed my mind, I'll show you one of the fill runs. So I've put the first hit of water in the pump and I'm just going to run the pump and um, that's going to um, 
almost drain it and then I'll have to refill it again. In fact, I'll try and fill it while it's uh, All right, I'll turn it off and then uh, fill it again and keep repeating till I've got all the water in the system. I've had the crypto miner mining for about three hours this afternoon now and the temperatures are stabilized. And all I can say is, wow. The um, temperature before for VRAM for the top 3090 in NiceHash was 94 degrees. It's now all the way down to 78 degrees. That's 16 degrees cooler on the VRAM temps. And if I check the uh, back plate, so before that was 70. And I've sort of scanned around and um, sort of the hottest places are sort of around 45-ish now. Most of the rest of the cart, the blade back plate is cooler. So it's gone, so the back plate was 70 degrees before, now it's down to 45. Uh, so that's 15 degrees cooler. This has just been a massive success. It's greatly reduced the operating temperature of this card. Um, Azus, you really need to be doing something like this on all the cards you sell. Um, rather than um, having to modify like this when the results are so drastic. I'm still just really blown away by that result. Uh, if I ever buy another in a Zeus water cooled RTX 3090, I'm just going to buy a cheap CPU cooler straight away. It's just a mod that should be done. Uh, I hope you find that interesting and uh, thanks for watching my channel.